Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Guo Wanda. I come from China Development Institute, a think tank in China based in Shenzhen. I am glad to share my research about Guangdong, Xiangang, Omen, Great Bay Area, and Shenzhen Special Economic Zone. I would like to focus on infrastructure connectivity, industrial innovation, and cooperation platforms. My topic will include five parts. First part, I will focus on about GBA, how about GBA's high-speed rail, intercity rail, and also subway system, how they can connect each other. Second part, I would like to talk about GBA's industrial development, especially the industrial clusters. Of course, I will talk about the innovation uh, uh, and also the uh, industrial innovation in this area. Third part, I will talk about the cooperation platforms. This means the development zones cooperate between Hong Kong and Shenzhen, and also cooperation development zones between Macau and Zhuhai. So we call it cooperation platforms. Fourth, I will talk about Shenzhen's special economic zone, what has happened in the last 40 years, how Shenzhen could be successful, what's the factors in Shenzhen's development. And of course, last, I will talk about the experience of Shenzhen special economic zone, what can we learn from Shenzhen's experience? So let's go to the first part about the infrastructure connectivity. Well, where is the DBA location? As you know, in China, there are four big city clusters. First one is in northern of China, Beijing, Tianjin, Hebei city cluster. Second one, around Yangtze River in Shanghai, Yangtze River Delta city cluster. Third one is Guangdong, Xiangang, Omen, Great Bay Area. You can see these three big city clusters just uh, located in coastal area. The fourth one is in inland Chengdu, Chongqing, metropolitan area. So these four city clusters are national strategy and is very important to, uh, development plan announced by central government. These cities are included in GBA. We call it two plus nine. Two means two cities, Hong Kong and Macau. Nine cities means Guangzhou, Shenzhen, Zhuhai, Fushan, Huizhou, Dongguan, Zhongshan, Jiangmen, Zhaoqing. In Guangdong province, the total area covered 56,000 square kilometers. Population cover more than 86 billion. And also the GDP about US 1.67 US dollar trillion US dollar in last year. So this area is the one of the most uh, wealthy 
period uh, in China and also highly developed area in China. So what is the difference in this area? Because this area include Hong Kong and Macau. As you know, Hong Kong and Macau promote the one country, two systems principle. And that means Hong Kong and Macau, the two special administrative regions of People's Republic of China have been allowed to retail capitalist system. And in mainland, uh, allow, adopt a socialist system. And also in this area, covers three customs territories, the Chinese mainland and Hong Kong and Macau, SARS. And also this area uses three different currencies, the Hong Kong dollar, Macau Nis, particle, Chinese Yuan, three legal systems. Hong Kong is on British common law, Macau's on Portugal's civil law, and also the mainland is socialist legal system. And also this area uses four languages as our official languages, Mandarin, Cantonese, English, and the Port Portuguese. So in this area, very diversified in language, in culture, in system, and also the different economic system. How about GBS transportation? Uh, because in this area, there's a Bay Area. Uh, so the big challenge is from the Eastern Bank to the Western Bank. Now, they have five bridges will connect East to West banks. Of course, three of them are already open. First one is the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge. It's, it's a very southern one. It's the longest bridge in the world. Second one is open is the, in, in northern area is the Human Bridges and the Nansa Bridges. Two others will open in the future. First one is Zhongshan Shenzhen Bridges, will open two years later. And also the other one is about the Shenzhen Zhuhai Sea uh, Crossing Bridge. Uh, yes, so maybe it will be open in uh, 10 years later. So let's uh, still have some plan uh, in this area because with the vehicles uh, increase very quickly and also the population still increase so it it is it should be more infrastructure connection between eastern bank with the western bank so uh uh, ambitious plan in this area about within one hour traffic cycle. That means with the high speed rails and also intercity rails and subways will link the different cities in there. If just rely on the vehicles, I think it will, will be the traf traffic jam in this area, but the railway system is very important for the one hour traffic cycle for the commuting people and also for the more efficient connector. So one hour traffic cycle first mean world class airport and seaport groups in these areas have five international airport and also three world-class seaport 
and also in this area should be connected by the real transit systems and also should be more efficient Koreans, as you know, because Hong Kong and Macau is a, a custom Koreans. So with, within the checkpoint, it should be more efficient about the Koreans. So, of course, they are the bottleneck of the last mile. What means the last mile? Uh, that means the connection between the different uh, transportation uh, uh, models. For example, the airport, how to connect with the airport, with the subway system, and also how to connect with the checkpoint, with the uh, uh, intercity uh, rails. And of course, how to connect with the high speed rails with the subway systems. So we call the last mile. So which two cities are the transportation hub in this area? Of course, Guangzhou and Shenzhen is the two important hub in this area. Uh, in this area, Guangzhou and Shenzhen are the international aviation hub. In Shenzhen and also in Guangzhou, the airport is based on the international airport. And also, they are the external transportation channel. That means in this area, Guangzhou and Shenzhen has a very strong external channel related with the other cities such as Beijing, Shanghai, and also the Western Pass city, uh, Chongqing and Chengdu. And of course, Shenzhen and Guangzhou in this area are very important internal one-hour traffic circle. That means the intercity rail and the subway system are just based on the hub of Shenzhen and Guangzhou. So we can see, for example, Guangzhou is a very important comprehensive transportation hub based on high-speed rails, intercity rails, and the subway rails. The subway system almost more than 10, 11, 15 subway systems, and also Shenzhen is a comprehensive transportation hub, also mixed with high-speed rails, intercity rails, and subway systems. And also in Shenzhen, in less than 10 years, the subway systems develop very quickly each year have three or five new lines open. So now it's more than 10 lines is open. According to central government's plan, we call the uh, five years plan, by the year 2025, this area will reach 4,700 kilometers in the railway system. Today, last year, just 24,000 kilometers. That means five years later, almost the double. By the year 2035, yeah, that means, yeah, 15 years later, this area, the railway system, will reach more than 5,700 kilometers. So the intensity of the subway system in this area is very high. Let's see Macau's city express lines. As you know, Macau is a very small island, just more than 32 square kilometers. So there still have the, the first phase have a, a express lines uh, connected to the two parts of islands. 
in the second phase, the expert size lies well connected with Hengqing and also Zhuhai. So we can see uh, in central government's plan, uh, mentioned about the Zhuhai's high-speed rail and intercity rails will connect with Macau's city express lines in three points. First point in Hengqing, and also, as you know, Hengqing with just the connector with Macau. Second is with in the Gongbei checkpoint, uh, and also connected with Macau, and also the third one just in the middle. So three stations means Macau will connect with Zhuhai's high-speed rails because inside Macau is just a uh, Express lines is not a uh, high speed rail, so that means uh, after connection Macau with Zhuhai, that means Macau will be involved in national high speed rail systems. How about Hong Kong? As you know, now Hong Kong have already have had high-speed rail connect Guangzhou, Shenzhen, and Hong Kong. It's open five years ago, and also now Hong Kong, Zhuhai, Macau have the bridge connected each other, and also it's open uh, several years ago. Now the central government have the new plan about the bridge as you know, the bridge now just uh, connect Hong Kong, Macau, Zhuhai. How about Shenzhen? Because Shenzhen is a big city, and also Shenzhen has have more than three million vehicles. So the central government announced the new plan about the double Y shaped bridge. That means it will be a connected line with Shenzhen and the bridge. So, of course, that means if the plan B comp complete, that means the bridge will connect Shenzhen, Hong Kong, Zhuhai, and Macau, we call double Y. And also, as you know, this year, Hong Kong chief executive announced 2021 policy adjust as a very ambitious plan to build twin cities and three circles. What mean twin cities? This means Hong Kong and Shenzhen. And the three circles means Hong Kong and Shenzhen quality development circle. That's the first circle. Second circle, that means Hong Kong, Shenzhen close innovation circle. The third one, this means Hong Kong and Shenzhen, eco-recreation tourism circle. These three circles means Hong Kong and Shenzhen connect more close each other in economically and also geography, transportation, and also the ecologically will connect it more close each other. And also in terms of transportation, the new plan Hong Kong announced about the northern metropolis and also to add five rails and three of them to connect with Shenzhen. We can see the map about the first one in the western part of Hong Kong, there's a rail connect Shenzhen, Qianghai, and also Hong Kong, Hongshuiqiao. Second one about the rail, just the close to the border to Shenzhen, Luohu, and also third one to north, close border to Shenzhen, Huanggang, and also another one just the to the north, just to 
another cheap point, Xiang Yuan Wei and Lian Tang. So that's a very ambitious plan about the transportation, the subway system connected between Shenzhen and Hong Kong. So the northern metropolis covers 300 square kilometers and also accommodate 2.5 million people, takes one third of Hong Kong's population and also one third of Hong Kong's area. And also there's another plan to just connect Shenzhen Airport with Hong Kong Airport. Uh, we call it the Western Express Line. Just 17 minutes by the rail from Hong Kong International Airport to Shenzhen International Airport. And also there are another plan connected with Shenzhen Airport with Guangzhou Airport. We call Guangzhou Shenzhen second high speed rail. As I mentioned just uh, about Shenzhen, Guangzhou and Hong Kong already open a high speed rail. So we call it the second high speed rail connect Hong Kong uh, connect to Shenzhen Airport with Guangzhou Airport. So that's the first part about infrastructure connection in this area. Let's go to the second part about industrial clusters innovation in this area. According to the outline development plan announced by central government in the year 2019, the Great Bay Area should develop four manufacturing industries, five strategic emerging industries, and 12 areas, such as smart manufacturing, advanced equipment manufacturing, and also the household appliances, marine economy, and also 3D printing, new health technology, offshore engineering equipment, high performance integrate circuits. So in this area is a very long industrial and clusters and also a lot of industrial clusters in this area. First industrial in this area we are focused on is integration of real economy with big data or artificial intelligence. According to a survey to the uh, entrepreneur, almost more than 76% uh, businessmen, they think the big data will be the most important uh, technology in the world. A second one is about the AI, third one cloud computing, and also fourth internet of things, and also 5G, blockchain, robots, biotech, VR and AR, counter size, drones. So the list of the high tech uh, will be integrated each other with the real economy, such as the manufacturing and also service industries. That's a very important industry development in this area. Second one in this area will focus on smart manufacturing. As you know, the smart manufacturing market in the world increase very quickly. And also in China, the domestic market increased much quite 
bigger than other uh, area. And also, the industry trends such as AR and VR will be widely used in, in the industrial development. And also, of course, the intelligent uh, home appliance uh, will be increased very quickly. So smart manufacturing has a very big market. So in terms of the smart manufacturing, this means the uh, upstream, midstream, and the downstream manufacturing process should be connected each other. So they can be used in smart agriculture, smart transportation, even the, the other industries development. So the GBA, this area, of course, has developed into a national demonstration area so for smart manufacturing. Because in this area, the manufacturing accounts for 10% of country's total. So this area is China's manufacturing base. And also, so in this area has a very highly demand for the chip market. As you know, more than 60% of the global chip market is in China. And also nearly 60% of China's chip market is in private data in this area. So the GBA's goal will be a national smart manufacturing demonstration zone. That means very important in national strategy for the manufacturing, especially chip uh, manufacturing. The third one in this area about industrial development is to develop a 5G economy and expense its applications such as digital economy, e-commerce, business, in industrial internet, share economy, social e-commerce. I think there's a, a lot of fields could be used with 5G. So we call 5G economy. We should just uh, develop a very uh, diversity industrial ecosystem. For example, Shenzhen plan to build term manufacturing innovation centers on 5G, such as new displays, integrated circuits, robotics, additive manufacturing, graphene, new energy vehicles, aerospace equipment, marine engineering equipment, precision medical and other emerging industries. And also, we can just from application side, such as smart vehicles, smart home applications, smart transportation, smart cities, smart security equipment, smart medical devices, new retail, smart agriculture. I think there's a, a lot of applications and also sectors include R&D, commercialization, innovative applications, and also information technologies. So in Shenzhen, there's a very ambitious plan to build 5G economy. Of course, in terms of 5G economy, the very important is the digital economy uh, based on 5G economy. What's the digital economy? That means the two sides, 
digital industrialization, such as the electronic information manufacturing industry, the new generation of information and the communication industry, so will software service industry. That's the very important uh, foundation of the digital industrialization. Second is the digitalization of the industries. That means the big data, the digital economy should be integrated with the agricultural sector, should be integrated with the industrial sector, and also should be integrated with the service industries. So we, we, we can just uh, develop agricultural smart equipment and drones, and also to facilitate smart monitoring, smart spraying, smart fertilization in agricultural sector. And also we can develop smart manufacturing, robotics, industrial internet, smart production, industrial cloud platform, network collaborative manufacturing in industry, and also digital culture and art, such as digital audio and video, video animation and gaming, online literature, smart communities, smart health care, smart education, smart transportation, smart tourism, smart logistics, and so on, used in service industries. So that's a very huge development in the digital economy. So according to outline development plan announced by central government for the Great Bay Area, should to build a globally influential international innovation and technology hub. That means in this area should to develop an economic system mainly driven and supported by innovation. By the year 2000. 22, that means last, last, last year, the target should be develop the technological and also the innovation in the uh, industry development. And by the year 2035, it, the target should be achieved as a world uh, influential innovation and in technology hub. So uh, international innovation and technology hub is a very important target. Another important target is to build a comprehensive national science center. Uh, two targets connect each, each other, but it's a little bit different. Later, I will talk about that. According to central governments, Chinese central governments, 13 five year plan. Uh, that's a big ambitious uh, plan about comprehensive national science center, uh, such as Beijing, Shanghai, and Hefei. You can see that's not included Shenzhen and also not included the Bay Area. It changed in last year. The Chinese Central Government announced the new plan about the Comprehensive National Science Center and also in Include Shenzhen and Great Bay Area. So, what's the difference? What's the connection between the International Innovation Technology Hub and Comprehensive National Science Center? The innovation 
and the technology hub uh, focus on more technological invention and application and more rely on enterprise R&D input and market orientation and also build size and technology parks. Compare with the comprehensive national science center, more focus on scientific discoveries and also large scientific installations. This means more fundamental research and more research imposed by government and also more rely on universities and to build size cities, size and education cities, knowledge cities, a little bit different with the technology parks. So we can see now Guangzhou, Shenzhen, Hong Kong, Macau uh, have a plan technological innovation corridor. Uh, the corridor have two paths, two corridors. First one, Guangzhou, Zhuhai, Macau. Another one, Guangzhou, Shenzhen, and Hong Kong. They are the very important corridor in this area. Why Guangzhou, Shenzhen, Hong Kong is a very important corridor in this area, according to World Intellectual Property Organization, WIPO, and each year they announce the Global Innovation Index. Hong Kong, Guangzhou, Shenzhen is the top size and technology clusters ranked second one. The first one is Tokyo, Yokohama. Second one is Shenzhen, Hong Kong, Guangzhou. In this area, so that means the in in the in global cities, this area is very important in innovation. So, what is the size cities plan in this area? Uh, just now I mentioned about uh, technology and, and innovation center. Another one, I talk about size cities, about the comprehensive national size cities. So the plan is about Shenzhen, Guangming size cities, Dongguan, New Qing size city, and Guangzhou size city, three size cities in this area. Shenzhen, Dongguan, and Guangzhou. We can see it in the map. Let's see what's the meaning about Shenzhen Guangmin size city. It's a major size and technology infrastructure clusters and emerging industry clusters in this area. It covers 100 square kilometers in Shenzhen and also focus on life size, information size, materials size, and the space size. So they are cover the important size research infrastructure, the big installations in the size city, Guangmin size city. Another one in Shenzhen, we call the Lo Ma Zhou Loop, a comprehensive national size. This area is just uh, uh, smaller than Guangmin size city because it's just cover three square kilometers in Shenzhen side and also Hong Kong, one square kilometers in Hong Kong side. So Hong Kong side plus Shenzhen side, just the four square kilometers, uh, comparison with Guangmin city, size city, almost 100 square 
kilometers, so it's a small one, but it's very important in the size cities because connects with Hong Kong to Shenzhen and also focus on si life size, information size, and the material size. The third one in Shenzhen is a Xili Lake International Size and Education City. It's a very beautiful city because it's just around the Xili Lake. And now there's uh, several universities such as uh, Tsinghua Universities, Beijing Universities, and also Southern Science Technology Universities in there. So it covers almost 60 square kilometers. And also they are have the very important Shenzhen Institute of Health Science state key laboratory of chemical on congenetics and function laboratories. That's a very important laboratories already set up in this area. So that's the second part about the innovation and the industrial cluster in this area. Let's go to the third part about the cooperation platforms of this area. In this area, there are two very important platforms. The plan announced by Chinese central government. First one, platform one is Hengqing. The plan is Guangdong Macau in depth cooperation zone. In the map, you can see Macau as AR is just uh, 32 square kilometers. Just uh, nearby is Hengqing Island originally belonged to Zhuhai city in Guangdong province. Now, Hengqing Island cover 106 square kilometers connected with Macau Island. Together, we call it Guangdong Macau in depth cooperation zone. In this area, have the specific policy to support such as the pre preferential tax. That means the in individual income tax rates uh, just the 15% and also corporate income tax rate is 15%. And also for Macaronese, they are, have the much lower uh, individual income tax rates if they are worked in Hengqing Island. So it, this developing zone, that means connected with Guangdong province and Macau SAR. The second one important platform announced by central government is Qianhai. Qianhai located just in Shenzhen and close to Hong Kong. It covers 120 square kilometers. Originally, Qianhai just 15 square kilometers 10 years ago. It, it, it already developed 10 years ago. But now central government announced new policy to support Qianhai to expand Qianhai's land to 120 square kilometers. And also the management system is close at administrative district because the 120 square 
the square kilometers close the Nanshan district and the Baoan district in Shenzhen. And also they uh, have the preferential tax policies and also have the, some special policies such as the financial policies, opening policies to support this Shanghai. Uh, Later I will talk more about it. So why Chinese central government announced the supporting policy for Qianghai and Hengqing as a very important platform because Qianghai and Hengqing platform play strategic roles in China's opening up. As you know, in China, the opening up platforms, including Xiong'an, Hainan, Pudong, and also now Qianghai and Hengqing. Qianghai is a high-level opening up hub. Hongqing is a high-level opening up system integrated with Macau. Pudong in Shanghai is a pioneer of high-level reforms and opening up. Hainan Island is an important opening up gateway in the new area. And also Xiong'an is China's city of the future. So, ECO is very important for plus one opening up platforms. And also, in terms of technological innovation industries in Qianghai, that means Qianghai new plan should develop high tech and also become a technological innovation center in this area. That means Qianghai should develop the newly emerging industries such as artificial intelligence, healthcare, financial technology, smart cities, the Internet of Things, and new energy materials and also to cooperate with Hong Kong because Hong Kong has a advantages of universities and also in fundamental researches and also Hong Kong has five top 100 universities in in the world, such as Hong Kong University, Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, Chinese University of Hong Kong, City University of Hong Kong, Hong Kong Polytechnic Universities. They are very good universities. And also Hong Kong has more than 16 state key labs in universities and also Hong Kong have a, a renowned scientific businesses such as DJI and also Sense Time for Parajur, very good companies in Hong Kong. So that means Shanghai should compile the advantages both Hong Kong and Shenzhen. Shenzhen has a very important innovation enterprise such as Huawei, Tencent, and also BYD, and also have uh, several developing uh, universities such as Shenzhen universities, Tsinghua universities, Beijing universities in Shenzhen. So that means Qianghai will more connect, more cooperation with Hong Kong and also use Hong Kong's human resources, capital resources. As you know, Hong Kong is an international financial center, international trade center. So there's a 
not only a lot of universities, but also have a, a capital inflow very freely, and also uh, the capital market develop very well, and also the uh, a lot of research institutions in there. And of course, Hong Kong have more internationalization and also more internationalization of the management regulations. So that means in Shanghai, we'll combine Hong Kong's advantages and the Shenzhen's advantages. So in Shanghai, it's a very important plan to develop digital economy and focus on digital rules, digital governance, and cross-border data. So I just mentioned about digital economy in China, also in this area. So in Shanghai, that's a very important uh, industries about digital economy and also cooperate between Shenzhen and Hong Kong to build digital economy innovation demonstration zone. That means five cooperation areas between Hong Kong and Shenzhen. First one about the date connectivity, second one about the cross-border data system, third one about the digital rules, Fourth about the date trading market. Five about the official policy to support the digital economy. So the digital economy, of course, the creative industry is a very important digital economy. Uh, that means the cultural soft power base and also the cultural exchange platform and also cultural production creation and distribution base to explore uh, shared more various culture. Of course, in Shanghai, the industrial development should include the financial industries and also cooperation with Hong Kong focus on cross-border financial services such as cross-border RMB loans, cross-border two-way bond issue insurance, cross-border two-way equity investment, cross-border two-way capital pool, cross-border asset transform, cross-border financial infrastructure. So in this area, in Shanghai, will be more development about the financial uh, technology companies, such as uh, WeBank and also commercial finance company called established by China Merchant Bank and China Union, Tenpei, and so on. So. In this area, the financial development is a very important industry in Shanghai. Yeah, let's go to Hongqing. Uh, how about Hongqing's industry development? Because Shanghai cooperates with Shen Shenzhen and Hong Kong. Shanghai cooperates between Guangdong and Macau. As you know, Macau's industry mainly rely on the gambling. Uh, so, but in Hengqing, it's not developed gambling. It's just uh, focused on the scientific and the technological innovation and the high-end manufacturing, such as integrated circuits, electronic components, new materials, new energy, big data, artificial intelligence, internet of things, and biomedicines. And also to build macro electronic industry for cheap design 
testing and inspection, and to build an AI cooperative innovation ecosystem, internet, particle version 6, that means IPv6, application demonstration projects, 5G application demonstration projects, and the next generation internet industry clusters. Why in Hengqing have the plan to develop a scientific technology innovation? Uh, because also it's based on Macau's advantages. As you know, Macau also have good universities such as Macau universities and also the Macau City Universities, Macau Science Technology Universities, and also they are very good in computer engineering, lunar and planetary science, tourist and hotel management, and also they have the key labs in Macau. And also, in Hengqing, the industry development will include it in meetings, incentives, conference, and exhibitions. That means MICE industry in Hengqing. As you know, in Macau, it's a very good in meetings, exhibitions, conferences, so they can connect each other. Now, I just mentioned about the gambling industry. There's no just in Macau. But in terms of conference, meetings, tourists, they can connect it, Macau and Hengqin. And also with the digital technology to develop the digital conference, the digital tourism. And also, in Hengqing, it will develop the cultural and business tourism, such as food distribution business, with the Portuguese-speaking countries, cooperates with the Portuguese-speaking countries, and also to develop cultural tourism because in Macau and also in Hengqing have a very good cultural resources, included the intangible cultural heritage at least. And also it can develop a cross-border e-commerce because in, in Zhuhai now have a very good development about the uh, e-commerce based in Zhuhai's industrial development. And also, with the advantage of Sino-Portuguese e-commerce, Chamber of Commerce, they can just uh, more connect with the market of the uh, Portuguese-speaking countries. Of course, in, in Hengqing, the institute development should include Chinese medicine with the pharmaceutical R&D pl platform and the use Macau manufacturing, Macau supervision, Macau design local uh, produced in Hengqing. But the local is Macau manufacture. So it can be developed a Guangdong, Macau, Chinese medicine, science and, and technology industrial park, and also to establish international standards. And of course, I talk about the finance industry in Shanghai. Hengqing also should develop more than finance such as cross-border R&B settlement business, 
and wealth management, bond markets, and the financial leasing. Of course, the insurance such as cross-border motor vehicle insurance, cross-border commercial med medical insurance, letter of credit insurance, and other businesses that we call the modern finance in Hongqing, uh, corporate uh, Macau, and also Guangdong province. Let's go to Bo Pass, Shenzhen, SEZ, a success of development zones. Shenzhen is adjacent to Hong Kong, covers about 2,000 square kilometers. Comparison with Hong Kong, Hong Kong is about 1,100 square kilometers. So we can see Shenzhen and Hong Kong just uh, connected geographically each other. Forty years ago, Shenzhen is a small fishing village. It has changed in 40 years. The left side, the picture shows 1983. That's the Shenan Road. As you know, Shenzhen uh, was set up in 19. So after three years, there's just a road we call Sunland Road. The right picture we can see 2015. That's the same road. It it, it changed a lot. And also the upside is uh, in 1989. At that, at that time, there's just the start to build the port. In 2008, the, the picture in 2008, that's the Yantian port. You can see it's a huge change from a regional port to an international shipping hub. And also the picture shows Sheko industrial zone. The left side is in 1980, because in Shenzhen, the Sheko industrial zone is the first developing zone in Shenzhen special economic zone. We can see the right side, the picture shows 2016, it changed very big. The same place, so, Shenzhen is a variety of development zones. In Shenzhen, it covers more than 15 industrial parks established by the country. This means there's a national parks, such as a national high-tech zone, and also pirate free trade zone, and also bonded zone, and also export processing zone. The map shows Shenzhen high-tech industrial parks, uh, different areas in close to Hong Kong, and also to the north, to, to, the, to the, in, the cities inland, also have the different zones in Shenzhen. So from the history, Shenzhen, Special Economic Zone upgraded for 40 years and also developed four generations of the developing zones. The first decade from 1980s to 1990, this means that's the reform and the opening up, the beginning of reform and the opening up. At that time, the industries, that's the three plus one trading mix. That's, that's more processing trading industries. So the typical developing zone is Sheko industry zone, as I just mentioned in the uh, 
uh, above page. And also in the second generation, second 10 years, we can see Shenzhen begin to develop its all industries. Uh, that means nine advantage industries, such as the computer and also telecommunication, and also at that time, Huawei, ZTE begin to develop. So the typical developing zone is Nansan high-tech zone. Uh, we can see the pictures. The third generation, the Shenzhen have big start scientific and technological innovation. We call the four pillar industries and also the companies such as Tencent, Ofic, OFILM, uh, and also the typical developing zone is Qianghai Pirate Free Trade Zone. I, I just mentioned about, about the, the two uh, cooperation zone, Qianghai Pirate Free Trade Zone is the third generation developing zone in Shenzhen. The fourth generation, that means Shenzhen, more focus on basic research and also develop a seven strategic emerging industries and also the typical companies such as Lecting, DJI, and also the typical developing zone is Guangming size city. I just mentioned about Guangming size city. So in 40 years, Shenzhen developed four generation industrial park and also four generation industries and also the different companies developed very quickly. So why Shenzhen develop so quickly? What's the background background for Shenzhen's development? In my view, I think the international industrial transfer is the important background and also the important opportunities for Shenzhen's 40 years development. As you know, in the world, they are three, the fourth uh, generation about industrial transform. The first generation is a U.S. industrial transform to Asian countries. And also the second round, still U.S. transfer to, to Asian countries. The third round is from the Asian developing, developed countries such as Japan and also some developing zones such as South Korea and also the, the Hong Kong, Singapore and the Taiwan region. They are just transferred to mainland China. So at the time, Shenzhen benefited from the third round of industrial transfer. So we can see in China, the Chinese rapid economic growth because of the development resource and also the uh, full period, uh, the initial development in the 1980s Later in 1990s is a rapid development. Later after 2000, yes, it's just the standardized development. And also in this 10 years it is innovative development. So in China, from the beginning, China set up, established more than 2000 500 development zones to just take the industrial transform. There are two models of China's development zones. First one is traditional development zone in the right side, we can see. 
the industrial develop, development zones, bounded area export processing zone, and also the the uh, economic and the technological de development zone. We call it the transitional development. So later, the emerging development zone in left side. This means the other featured experimental zones synthetically reform testing district and also comprehensive bounded area. In the middle is the special control area of customs, uh, both in traditional de development zones and in emerging development zones. So we call the two models. In the middle is, is the, about the customs model. We can see the management models of China's developed zones have the one, two, three, four, five models. The first one led by admin, administrative committee, such as Kunshan Development Zone in Jiangsu province. Secondary is operated by companies such as Zhangjiang High Tech Zone in Shanghai. Thirdly, about coordinated by administrative committees such as Zhongkai High Tech Zone in Huizhou Municipality in Guangdong Province, nearby Shenzhen. And also fourth, sino foreign cooperation model, such as Suzhou Industrial Park, that's been cooperated uh, between Singapore and also the Chinese government. Fifth is commission model, such as Mianyang Development Zone in Sichuan Province. These five models, I think, is a uh, a very interesting model in China's de development zones. Take four example for China's de development zones. The first example is Zhongguanchen in Beijing, from electronics to science innovation. As you know, at the very beginning in Zhongguanchen, it's just a, a street uh, nearby Beijing University. So the picture shows in 1998, it's just the uh, electronics street. Later, Zhongguanchen development zones become a size innovation hub in the picture shows in last year. Second examples we can see, Shanghai Pudong, new area from a suburb first. At the very beginning, Pudong is a less developed area. After setting up the new district, now Shanghai Pudong become a new CBD. We can see the pictures from the left side to the right side. Surgery is about Shuzhou Industrial Park, from an industrial park to a new urban area. Uh, at the very beginning, Suzhou Industrial Park, just a lot of factories in there. The now is not only factories, but also a lot of business, a lot of service, and a lot of people are living in there. So Suzhou Industrial parks become a new urban area. The fourth example is about Shenzhen, from a processing trade industrial park to a global metropolis, as China is a Chin Chinese silicon value. We can see uh, before I talk about Shenzhen, uh, in the early 1980s, just a, a village uh, later become a processing industrial park. 
Now Shenzhen is a metropolis, it's a, it's a big city. So Shenzhen now the population more than 17 million is big cities. It's a very young city, young people worked and live in Shenzhen. 80%, more than 80% of the population is between 15 to 59 age. That means most, more than 80% of people, they are working people. Just uh, less than 6%, about 60 years older. So in Shenzhen is a very young city, young people work and live in there. Shenzhen is a high-tech city. In last year, there were more than 18,600 national high-tech enterprises and has established more than 2,600 innovation platforms. The composition of Shenzhen strategic imaging industries we can see it next generation IT takes 48 percent digital economy in last year takes 16 percent high-end equipment manufacturing takes 13 percent green and low carbon industries take 12 percent marine economy take 4%, new materials take 3%, and biomedicine take 4%. So we can see uh, the new strategic imaging industries in Shenzhen develop very quickly with the next generation, IT, digital economy, and so on. So let's go to the final part. What's the experience of Shenzhen Special Economic Zone? So the first, Shenzhen in the future, and also today we talk a lot about to implement new security strategy and promote further opening up. What's the new security strategy? That's the national strategy announced by Chinese central government, that means the domestic development, domestic market circle, and international development, international market, the two circles should be connected each other. So Shenzhen should play a key role in the Due circulation because the Shenzhen Corporation with Hong Kong. Hong Kong is an international financial center, and the Hong Kong more connected with the international market. So Shenzhen connected with more domestic market. So they are just uh, together. They play a key role in due circulation strategy. Secondly, Shenzhen should adjust the industries and adapt to the changes in the global supply chains. As you know, in recent two years, especially after COVID-19 impacts on supply chain, world supply chain. So now we talk, talk a lot about how to build a fully supply chain, global supply chains. So in Shenzhen should focus on cheap by pharmacy, high-end manufacturing, and other key areas, and, and, and more show sufficient innovation. Third one, Shenzhen should focus on some weakness in innovation and cutting edge technologies. What's the cutting edge technologies? As you know, based on the China-US trading conflict, as you know, in Shenzhen, 
some companies such as Huawei, even BYD, and also Tencent, they are, have negative uh, effects on their business. So now Shenzhen just have the plan to focus on more basic research, more R&D on high-tech area, and also to increase technological transform uh, cap capabilities more connected with the scientific innovation. And also to establish a diverse industrial ecosystem and develop more than service functions. That means in the future, Shenzhen's de industrial development is talents, small scale and information networks. Of course, now the big companies is very important, but in the future, we should more small business and also more talents. And also they can have based on Shenzhen, increase very quickly, then more big companies and more connected with the board. So the more than service functions, that means the management services and also finance services, commercial services, and also, of course, the, the uh, entertainment services. So the people, the talents, the scientists, they are working in Shenzhen, living in Shenzhen. They, are, they think it's good. It's very good, very, very good environmental and very good uh, facilities and also very good public service in there. So what can South Africa learn from Shenzhen? First, I think uh, that's very important to implement opening up, undertake industrial transform and integrate into global industrial chains. Of course, the Belt and Law Initiative and also China domestic market and also in the international market is a important opportunities for industrial transform and also for opening up and also more connected with the global industrial chase. Another experience is to establish opening up industrial parks the different uh, special economic zones, economic and technological development zones, free trade pilot zones, and also the government should support good economic foundations. So I think that's a very important experience from Shenzhen. And also to explore diversify models for development zones to introduce both market force and government and foreign investment in the domestic capitals. What does this mean? This means the government should have support and have the important plan in advance to set up the developing zones and also to abstract foreign investment and also to uh, support the domestic capitals to to invest in the developing zones, and also to develop local enterprises and industries. What does mean local industries? That means you should have to uh, develop the big names and the star projects, and also with the local enter pioneer to develop the industries. And also, I think it's very important to build people-oriented infrastructure, supporting facilities, such as the airport, the subway system, the, the port. That's very important uh, infrastructure. 
How about the financial? Maybe you can adopt the PPP model and also to develop the capital market to support the infrastructure, the capital investment, and to meet the needs of enterprises and talents. And of course, it should to do top design. What does it mean top design? That means the government should have the concept of planning first, construction follows. You should first have the urban planning, development planning. And also, according to Shenzhen's experience, the planning have three levels. The first level is about law. You should propose policies and the rules about the special economic zones based on law. Secondly, about the planning, about the industrial planning, spatial planning. Uh, so you have have the two planning is very important. The third one about the reports about the investment facility and also financing and also the operation and management. So we call the comprehensive planning system. The system is three levels. The, the, the upper level is about the law, very important. Always the law announced by central government or sometimes the local government. Congress, for example, in Shenzhen, the first special economic zone announced by Chinese Congress, by central government. Later, Qianghai, uh, special economic zone, I, I talk about announced by local Congress. Uh, so second level is about the planning, uh, very important about the developing planning, the spatial planning. Third one about the, how about the finance, how about the investment, and also how about the policy. So you have the different level desire in there. So I think that's my topic about the Great Bay Area and about the special economic zone. Thank you for your attention.